So, not a shifter, not a drifter, away from what? Paul is going to be very specific again. Don't be a shifter or a drifter away from the hope held out in the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is, and many will be surprised to hear this, the gospel of Jesus Christ is about hope. Who would have believed that? <coughs> we found out today, thinking of chapel and church, and, you know, when that, the, the, the thought of chapel floats across their head, you know, just before they manage to push it away. Who would have thought it's all about hope? It's about the sort of person who is a genuine Christian, is this verse, and the genuine Christian is transfixed with hope. Why, why, why are we here? Why are we bothered? It's because of the hope we have in Christ, isn't it? Ultimately, that's what it's about. Now, you've got to admit, wherever you stand on Jesus, if anyone reckons they're going to live forever, that is bound to affect the way they live in the here and now, isn't it? You'll be living for that. If you're the real deal sort of Christian, says Paul, you won't budge from that hope. There really is a pretty bright light at the end of the tunnel for the Christian. And that light out there ahead of the Christian shines back down the darkened corridor of where I am in the short term to lighten the dark and fetid spot that I find myself standing or stooping or crouching or lying in today. The light's coming back here. It's hard to just sit there and be thrilled with it, isn't it? I know, I know it is. I know it is! It's hard to get hold of. That's where faith comes into play, isn't it? To lay hold of that hope. And to shine that light into the current fetid darkness in which I sit, what I live. But it is bound to come back here, that light, if it's for real. And look, if, if I reckon that bright light of freshly dawning day is where following Christ is going to get me, to spend eternity in safety and rest and glory with him forever, and if I believe that on the basis of the historical fact of his death and resurrection, the person who genuinely believes that is no way going to be moved from that hope. It's going to be like the rock in the middle of the street. They're gone anyway. I'm going anyway. Do you remember that situation where um, Jesus had been teaching and the teacher was pretty hard to take? He does that. He does that. He teaches some days and the teaching is pretty hard to take. And a lot of people left. And he let them go. And the disciples are kind of looking around thinking, hey, this, this, this looked okay, but it's looking not so good today. And Jesus turns to them and he says, uh, you going to go too? And Peter straight back to him and says, well, where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. Where are we going to go? See, that's how not being moved from the hope held out in the gospel gets you. It gets you into a position of stability and security and perseverance if you continue in your faith. Mm -hmm. so it's the hope that keeps you going as a Christian. The hope, sure and certain, that brings you to persevere. The sort of Christian that perseveres, established and firm, not moved away, that sort of Christian is the sort that gets stuck into feeding their hope. Feeding their hope. Shining the light in the dark corridor. You'd be a muppet, wouldn't you, if, if you walked through the dark corridor when there was a torch in your pocket and you didn't take it out and shine it around a bit? A complete muppet. And there are people who say, oh yeah, you're just jacking up your hope, you're just jacking up. No, actually, I'm walking down a dark corridor, I'd like to turn the lights on, please. all too easy, all too cool, all too appealing to be the sort of, sort of Christian version of the goth or emo. What, whatever, whatever comes along, you know, oh, there's always a dark side to it. I can do that, can't I? <laughs> I can do that. Easy, easy. You can hold that. That is easy to do. Maxing up the frustrations the creation is genuinely subject to. Paint it black, or at least some dreary shade of charcoal. That, says Paul, is not the way to continue in your faith. If you continue in your faith, establish and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. That's not the way to continue in your faith, that Christian goth thing. That's not the way to be established and immovable. But hey, it's your choice. It's your choice. Paul's saying, 
if you continue in your faith, establish and firm, not move from the hope held out to you in the gospel. It's just held out to you. Where do you want to go? It's not forced on you. It's not battered into you. It's held out to you. Paul, what are you talking about? Held out. I, I seem to have had a bit of a problem recently working out quite how much bread we're going to need each week, each day. Quite a problem with it. And, uh, you know, the bread sort of doesn't get used. It kind of piles up there anyway. And then it gets to be sort of, you know, something you can knock a nail in with. And, uh, how much use then? What are you going to do with that? And, uh, as I said, I've, I've had that issue recently. And, and what I've been doing is saying to myself, oh, it's okay, I, I won't throw it away, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to the next list, because you've got some little cows and they like a bit of bread. They love a bit of bread. At least some of them do. That's the problem. Because I can never remember which mob of them it is <laughs> that actually likes the bread, you know? So there you go, you've got the bread and you've got to get outside and you've got to take the bread out and sit in there. Okay, well, let's go for my boots on. So you go to the back room, you put your boots on, and your jacket on, your cap on, and you pick up the bread, and you come in the yard, and you get the door, and pick it up. And you have to go up, fill up the trap, and you walk up, so you like, did that one, did that one, get up here, so you go on up, and you see the gate, and in the field, and they all sort of show interest, and they come on over, and you hold it out. And this is where the problem arises, because some of them just don't want to know. They're looking at you thinking, where's the bag of cow? That's right. And they get a bit aggy now because they haven't got cannons. And the other lot, they'll just rip your arm off the bread. <laughs> so you get out there and you put half a loaf on the palm of your hand and you stick it out and you wait. There is bread being held out. It is good for them. It definitely cheers a cow up to eat it. But there are some of them who just won't come over and eat it off your hand. And there are others, as I say, who will come and charge up to you and come banging into you and rip your arm off for it. If you continue in your faith, establish and firm, not move from the hope that's being held out to you in the gospel. It's there. Take it. Deal with it. Use it. Even if they're being really ungrateful and unpleasant, you don't crowd a cow into the corner of a field, take it firmly by the neck, force open its cake on, and wrap a loaf, that, loaf, that, loaf down its neck. Do you? You don't do that. There are several reasons you don't do that. <laughs> but all Paul is saying is this. There is hope being held out to you in the gospel. You know it? Do you want to continue in that? Unmoved? It's held out to you. If you don't take it, it will not be forced on you, and that's your lookout, but there is hope held out to you here. I sat in a cafe recently not far away with a lady who, let's say, had not been given a worry-free prognosis. What have I got for her? What have I got for her? What have you got for her? I tell you this hope here. Christ actually died on the cross to pay the price of your and my sin and make it okay to face God on the day of judgment, which is where we're going. And having paid the price of my sin, he rose from the dead to prove he'd done that, he paid the price. There is tremendous hope held out in this gospel. And he wants to be ripping my arm off it. Living in a day by day, six Continue in your faith, not move from the hope held out in the gospel.